top five worst things ever about keeping reef tanks right now. Let's go. Top five. Top five, top five. Top five, top five. Okay. Now, there is no particular order to this list because honestly, it was difficult enough just trying to narrow it down to five solid things. I mean, there is a, there is a lot of bad things that annoy me about this hobby. So I narrowed it down to the top five and I'm probably missing something that's more important, but hey, this is, this is my personal top five. Okay, number one, one of the worst things about keeping reef tanks is Aptasia. Actually, Aptasia is both number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. And that's the video, because Aptasia sucks, no. Okay, number one, the worst things about this hobby is the sneaky costs, okay? The sneaky costs of reef tank keeping, they really catch up to you. Obviously, you have your standard expenses, then when walking into this, you know, right? I mean, it's a lot already. You know, you're talking about, you know, your tank setup, you know, your lights, your equipment, wave makers, power heads, Heads, sand, etc., heaters, whatever, right? You are you already know this cost. It's expected walking into it. And those costs suck too. But what I'm talking about is the sneaky costs, because the sneaky costs are the ones that sneak up on you, you know? <laughs> the sneaky costs are, yeah, they can blindsight you and it can be detrimental to whether you stick out this hobby for reals for a long time, whether you're a keeper, a reef keeper for life. Um <laughs> So sneaky costs, what are the sneaky costs that tend to pop up with reef keeping, you ask? Okay, there are countless because they happen all the time. But a solid example is like, you know what happened here in Texas like a few months back, you know? We never get power outages that last for a long time. We had power outage that lasted a week. Freak weather hazards that are totally not typical for your area and you lose everything and it costs a lot of money. Sneaky cost. Another sneaky cost is, you know, when you're not at the house, it's always when you're not at the house. One day you're not at the house and your tank just simultaneously combusts, you know. The glass, it's everywhere and your living room. To say it's flooded is like, kind of like the nice way of explaining it to, you know, your, your spouse, uh, everything is totally destroyed. Um, it's not even new carpet at this point. It's, it's you, you need a lot of work done to your house. Sneaky cost. Another sneaky cost would be your divorce attorney following this uh, tank combustion. You know, divorce lawyers are quite expensive and these, these sneaky costs can add up. <laughs> just, just kidding, but yes, I mean, not everybody understands, you know, the game here. But yeah, sneaky costs are definitely the most tragic and unexpected of expected things that you enter into when joining this hobby. You're gonna have a sneaky cost at some point. You never know how much it's gonna be for. Definitely makes the list, if not tops it. Number two of one of the worst things about reef tank keeping is snail flipping. These snails just are almost on a mission to die. I've learned my lesson. I don't add a snail in there unless it's pretty large and it's known to be a flipper, like a self flipper. You do all this, you do all this, you know, big snail that flips itself, you know, strategic planning with your cleanup crew and they still do it. I mean, they always do it, you know? Your, your life is a bit easier in terms of shell carcass picking if they are known to flip themselves, but it still happens. And it's seriously so annoying. What is it with these snails that they're just incapable? Those big ones though, like they really put up a fight. Like they have a fight in them, but it's almost like, why are you flipping the hardest way? Like, why are you attempting to flip yourself in the most difficult way that you can, Mr. Snail? If you went around that way, like you, you would be flipped. It's like, I don't know, some of them I just feel like straight up have a death wish sometimes because I've seen them jump from the top to the bottom, just, you know, ready for it. I mean, how are these snails not extinct in the wild by now? Just bewilders me because clearly they're not making it into, you know, the common reef tank very easily. And I don't even want to hear that nonsense about, there's so much more things to grab in the ocean because there's not, I mean, maybe, but look, I mean, the distance in this aquarium, it's very much smaller than the distances between things in the ocean, you know? So I feel like that's where, that's not an excuse. These snails, it's time that they, they toughen up and they learn how to flip themselves because it's so annoying. I'm not gonna sit here flipping. You can tell that this 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 video is gonna turn into a ramble already, you know, because I 
<laughs> These things really upset me. Number three of five of the worst things uh, in the reef tank keeping hobby. Number three is, um, number three would be kind of a sad one, a little bit of an emotional one, is how much unexpected losses of things like really cut you deep. I'm not even talking tank crashes. I mean, tank crashes are obviously the pinnacle of my life sucks and I'm, I'm going to go in a funk for a little bit. I mean, that hurts. That really hurts to just lose everything and all that money and effort. But I mean, like even small things, you know, like, like literally like crustaceans can like hit you sometimes. I have a, what do you call it? fighting conch, for example, my 40 gallon. And that is the first creature I've ever added into any aquarium. And I, I feel very fondly of this conch. I mean, this is my conch. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna say conch. I'm not gonna say, I don't like saying conch. It's conch, it will always be conch. I'm very attached to this conch conch, okay? <laughs> my conch conch means so much to me because it's literally the first thing I've ever had. I mean, he's going on with me almost five years strong. I love that conch conch. I feel so strongly towards this conch conch and it's kind of, kind of irrational. I guess, you know, I understand a tank crash. I understand a prized coral that's, you know, grown to colony size that you lose like within a day. But why am I so attached to a conch conch? It's one of the worst things because every time you lose something, it breaks a little piece of you inside. I don't know if you just end up getting over it in time or your heart just gets colder, you know? I think it's, I think it's just that your heart gets colder, but I guess whatever allows us to make peace with this hobby. Yeah, definitely. Dying con conches are one of the worst things in this hobby, for sure. And number four on the list of some of the worst things about reef keeping, traveling. Wow, I never would have thought I would have said this. Honestly, if somebody told me before I'd started this hobby that you're going to dislike traveling, you're going to try avoid it as much as you can, if not consciously, definitely subconsciously, because every time you come home, you're stressed out. Before you leave, you're stressed out. Throughout the vacation, you're stressed out. I probably would have thought again whether I should uh, be a reef keeper, but here we are now, it's too late, obviously, and uh, I don't enjoy going on vacations like I used to, and that sucks, you know? However, if you do wanna enjoy your vacations a little bit more, I recently made a video that you should check out, how to prep yourself for uh, your vacation with your reef tank so you're not miserable because it still is. Definitely one of the worst things about this hobby, and uh, despite my video, it's 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 still always going to make this list. How, how could a hobby make you hate your le leisure time? Honestly, it, it's it's kind of double-sided, isn't it? It's weird. Anyway, traveling, worst part about reef keeping. And last but not least is definitely got to be online experts. Ooh. Why are there so many online experts? Okay, there, there are so many reasons why online experts are terrible. Okay, well, you know exactly what I mean when I'm saying this. The online experts that always know the one right, right way that something should be done. I mean, it's the total only way under all circumstances. Uh, anything else is just so appalling of an option to even briefly consider that you're just, you're not, you're not set out for this whole thing anyway. Those online experts, those are the ones that I'm talking about. I feel like there's so many ways that people go about doing things in this hobby, about fixing bad things in this hobby, like algaes, pests. People have different methods and what works for them. And uh, when, you know, 100 uh, online experts you know, approach you from all angles over your, you know, Aptasia problem, um, it, it becomes a little overwhelming, but you have to remember that these approaches and, you know, how to fix things, they have varied over time. I mean, since this hobby started until today, things have changed so much. We don't use a lot of the methods that were heavily employed back in the day anymore, you know, anyway, but at the time it was like obvious that garlic, I guess what I'm trying to say is that people have different situations they're working with, like Aptasia, you might have a mild case, you might have a terrible case. People have different tank sizes, equipment, corals, coral types, maintenance routines, uh, fish, coral types. What? There are so many variables that these online experts just kind of confuse you and send you down the wrong track. Uh, more than was ever necessary. I think a golden rule when dealing with uh, those kinds of scenarios is take online experts' opinions with a grain of salt 
anybody's opinions or suggestions for that matter, because Stick to what you know about your tank first, what you know has worked for you in the past, that is most important. And if you're really approaching something new and you would like to get advice, don't listen to the first uh, online expert and you know try to get the consensus on a group of 10 online experts. I mean, heck, at least you can kind of gauge you know, any common themes between their uh, superior knowledge, you know? So yeah, that is my list of what I think the top five worst things about keeping a reef tank is, but there are definitely way more worse things out there uh, in this hobby probably, but there are even greater number of great things about this hobby. Don't get this as I'm hating on the hobby because hey, I'm still in it with a monster tank. So the commitment is real. Hope you guys like this video. I know you guys probably have different top five worst things that bother you. So let me know in those comments below what your top five things uh, that you dislike are. Let me know. I'd love to know what they are, except if you're an online expert, we don't need any of those on this channel.